So we just motivated that we want to work with non-parametric predictive distributions. And the way by which we will achieve this is via Gaussian processes. So let's start off with the definition of Gaussian processes. Now a Gaussian process is a collection of random variables and any finite number of which is jointly Gaussian distributed. Okay, so let's think about what this means. Suppose we have a finite collection of random variables. Uh, then we already saw that in the multivariate Gaussian distribution case that if I have a vector of random variables, which are drawn from a Gaussian with a particular mean and a particular covariance matrix, then we already saw that if we take a subselection of these random variables, then the vector of these uh, variables is again uh, normal distributed with some mean and some covariant matrix, which could be derived from this factorization of the covariance matrix uh, that we saw over there. And this property is actually directly given by this uh, marginalization property of the, the Gaussian uh, distribution. Now, a feature of Gaussian processes is that we can actually also handle a collection of random variables, which is of infinite size. So we have an infinite number of uh, random variables. And this is sort of skipped in, in this uh, definition over here. So this collection of random variables is, uh, so these random variables, they are indexed with, with time or space because a Gaussian process is a uh, stochastic process. And now I do not want to go into full detail what then in turn is a stochastic process, but the idea is that we can have an infinite uh, number of random variables and each of these random variables is indexed with a particular point in time or in space or some, on some continuous manifold. And because we can, in principle, uh, consider all points in time, so that means I have an infinite amount of uh, random variables. Uh, but now I actually prefer to adapt this uh, functional viewpoint. So this, what I'm going to explain next, actually represents the same thing, the same definition. So what is typically done is to uh, think of Gaussian processes as a representation of uh, distribution over random functions. So. Just like with the normal distribution, it spits out a vector. You can think of a Gaussian uh, process as a distribution that returns a random function. And then this uh, function that is sampled from such a Gaussian process, that, that can be sampled at a particular uh, point x, right? On which this uh, function is defined. And so this uh, function evaluated at, at point x is actually a random variable uh, denoted with f of x, right? Because my function can look different every, every time I sample the function. So that's actually what it says. So I'm, I'm going to observe my function f given my input x and every time I observe something slightly different, but it is a random variable. So it has an expectation and this expectation is given by this mean function. So this mean function is again a function of x and the covariance uh, between two different points on, on my function is given by uh, the kernel function. So this kernel function really quantifies the amount of covariance uh, between how much my function uh, varies uh, at a particular point x um, relative to another particular point uh, x prime. Okay, so this Gaussian process uh, gives me a particular function and this function may look different uh, every time I, uh, I sample it, but on average it returns uh, a particular function. So let, let this be uh, m of x and then the blue lines are particular samples uh, f of x. Then I can look at the, the variance for a fixed point. Uh, so this could be, for example, the covariance of f of x with itself. So really that's the, this pointwise uh, variance. But then we can also have correlation, right? Meaning that if I have a variation in this point, then uh, this implies that my uh, point close to it, for example, is also going to be high. So there's a high correlation between these points. And this a covariance between different points that's given by uh, the kernel essentially. Okay, now let's see what happens if I uh, am going to sample this, sample this function on a collection of input points x1. So these are my points on which I'm going to observe my function f and this f is going to look uh, slightly different every time I observe it. Then it turns out that this uh, vector is going to be given by this normal distribution with a particular mean and a, a covariance matrix, right? Because the covariance between each of these points, so the covariance between fx and fx prime is given by uh, this kernel. And the mean of this random variable is given by this, this mean function. So the mean function for each x uh, observation point, I'm going to evaluate it. So if I'm going to observe my function f, then this vector of observation is going to be a random variable drawn from this multivariate uh, Gaussian.
Okay, now let's verify if this is indeed a Gaussian process. So a Gaussian process said that uh, any finite number uh, of which, so any subset of, of my random variable is also going to be Gaussian distribution, distributed. And that actually follows then directly from this marginalization property of Gaussians, right? Because I can uh, split uh, my observation set into two parts. So um, this entire vector is split into an F1 vector and an F2 vector. And then I can also split the covariance matrices and this, uh, this average vector. So that gives me that the probability distribution for my uh, F1 vector is also a uh, Gaussian distributed. And that was the main point of a Gaussian process, that each subset in itself is also going to be a, 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 a Gaussian distributed uh, variable. So we showed that if we start off with a finite set, then we can also always break this down into these uh, subsets. But this generally holds for all observations uh, X that I can make. And this holds because my kernel is a proper kernel. So that means that this particular gram matrix is always going to be uh, positive definite. Okay, so uh, we see that we can think of Gaussian processes as sort of distributions that return uh, full functions. So I can sample from this Gaussian process and that gives me one uh, function. And I can evaluate these functions at uh, points, let's say observation points. And that gives me a vector, which is a random vector, a random variable. Uh, drawn from some multivariate uh, Gaussian distribution characterized uh, by this, uh, this kernel function. So let's try to make this a connection between random variables as vectors and random functions a bit more concrete. And we're going to do this by thinking of such a function f drawn from a Gaussian process as an extremely high dimensional vector drawn from an extremely high dimensional multivariate Gaussian distributed. And with that I mean the following. So Let's say this is my uh, function f of x. Then I can vectorize this function, right? So I can sample it at a set of points uh, x1, x2, x3, and so on. Where at each point I obtain, uh, this is the function at x1, this is the function value at x2, this is the function value at x3. So I obtain this random vector, so this random variable which is a vector of all these random variables in themselves, right? Because each sampled function value is a random variable in itself. And if n of them, so if I sample n of these points, I get an n-dimensional uh, random variable. Now I could also decide to, to sample this function on a denser grid, right? So at, at closer intervals. And this would in principle then give me a vector um, of let's say infinite dimension if I let this number of sample points go to infinity. So that's how you should think of such a continuous function as an infinite number of these uh, random variables uh, next to each other. And it is then the kernel that characterizes the correlation between all these points, uh, all these infinite amount of, of points. And because my kernel is a continuous function in itself, it is able to capture the correlations between all possible axes on my continuous uh, input uh, domain. Okay, but so we can have such a uh, random function drawn from a uh, Gaussian process and I can sample it on a set of points and it gives me a vector, a random vector. And so this also gives us a way to sample Gaussian processes, right? Because we're interested in maybe evaluating this function at a particular set of input points x. So let's define a grid on which we want to sample this function. So here I draw a regular grid. Um, what I then do, I am going to construct the gram matrix. So the matrix of all these uh, kernels evaluated of one point relative to the other. And then really I have defined a multivariate Gaussian distribution of size equal to the number of data points uh, that I'm going to uh, sample or consider. And then I can simply draw uh, these vector values from this Gaussian distribution and that gives me a, a different vector every time. And now in the next video I'm going to give some explicit examples of such randomly sampled uh, functions. But for now, let's continue a bit with uh, the notion of this Gaussian process in general. And actually, I'm going to show a particular example where we already encountered a Gaussian process, actually. We actually already encountered such a Gaussian process in the context of Bayesian linear regression. So suppose I have this model for a function f of x, and it's parameterized by a set of weights w. I saw this bracket is put in the wrong location. Okay, so we have this linear model parameterized by a set of weights w. Then in this Bayesian linear regression case, I can put a prior on W, right? So I can decide not to just pick 
a particular W and then fix my function, but I can say, oh, I have a random variable W, which if you sample it, it generates a new function every time I sample it, right? And then we can define distributions for W in several ways. Well, we can start off with a prior saying that, okay, this is my prior distribution for W, but we also saw that later on, uh, we derive these posterior distributions for W, right? Which are, is a bit more informed uh, distribution defined by my observed uh, data space. But the general idea remains that I'm going to assume that W in itself is also a random variable. And now let's just say it's drawn from this uh, Gaussian uh, distribution uh, given over here. So with zero mean and some uh, covariance matrix. Then uh, this f of x is actually a Gaussian process, right? So I can evaluate the expectation for uh, these function values. And now you can show because my uh, expectation of my prior on W is also zero that, um, well, from linear linearity, it actually follows that the expectation of f of x is given by the expectation of the product of phi of x and w. Phi of x doesn't depend on w, so I can take it outside and this thing is zero. So the expectation of my function is going to be zero. But then I also need to know the covariance between two differently sampled points, uh, f of x and f of x prime. Uh, well, because it has a zero mean, this is my uh, expression for the covariance, so the expectation of the product of these two functions. And I can write that in the following form, again using linearity. So this is just the product of this together with its uh, transpose. And then I have to compute the expectation of w squared and that is simply given by this uh, covariance matrix. So we see that the covariance, so we see that the covariance of these uh, two random variables because the function evaluated at a point gives me a random variable. So this covariance is given by the following expression and we can define this to be a kernel, right? So the kernel. So this tells me that basically for any a collection of points for which I make these observations, I can write this out and, 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 and compute the expectation and the covariance. And so for any set of observations x to xn, uh, these are all jointly Gaussian. So such a function f of x is distributed according to a Gaussian process with the kernel, the kernel given uh, as follows. Okay, and now to wrap things up, uh, we just learned that a Gaussian process can be thought of, uh, of as a distribution uh, from which I can sample full functions. And these distributions are characterized uh, via kernel and a mean function. Right? Such Gaussian processes are characterized by a kernel function and a mean function, uh, which describes uh, the expectation of my function values at a particular point x and the covariance between two of such uh, sampled observations. Now in the next video, we're going to have a closer look at some explicit examples of, of Gaussian processes by picking one particular kernel and see what the resulting uh, functions drawn from such a Gaussian process uh, looks like.